Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new video. Small Tesla coils are just cool. They are often underestimated very quickly. Because small coils can also produce big lightning. That's why today we want to improve the tiny dual resonant solid state Tesla coil from our last video. Let's start with the schematic from the last video. It's very simple, however there are a few problems which I will focus on. To explain the problem I have to go a bit further now. IGBTs don't tolerate high frequencies very well. That's why we try to lower the resonant frequency of the secondary coil as much as possible. They like it even more when they do zero current switching. This simply means that the IGBT in the bridge only switch when there is a current flowing in the primary resonant circuit. The energy is completely in the capacitor or in the magnetic field of the coil at the time of switching, for example. This makes the switching very effective and the IGPTs tolerate higher frequencies. To prevent the voltage in the primary resonant circuit from becoming too high during operation, the dual resonant solid state Tesla coil is interrupted. Otherwise, the IGPTs would quickly say goodbye as the maximum collector emitter voltage would be exceeded. Now imagine that the interrupter interrupts the DRSSTC at the exact moment when a maximum current flows through the primary resonant circuit. This could be a few hundred amps. The IGPTs would give up directly. So this would be high current switching, not zero current switching. This is exactly the problem with the circuit from our last video. The solution is a D flip-flop, a 14 leg IC called 74SL74. Simply put, this ensures that the DRSTC circuit is only interrupted when there is no current flow. This makes the circuit only slightly more complicated, but improves it enormously. In the last video we used a half bridge, but because this is built like a voltage divider, only half of the voltage is applied to the primary core. With the full bridge on the other hand, the full input voltage is applied to the primary core. That means, simply explain, that with a full bridge at the same input voltage, twice as long flashes come out of the secondary core as with a half bridge at the same voltage. That's what we want. The problem is that the GDT driver needs more power for a full bridge, otherwise the gate signal would look not so good. That means that the IGPTs will die faster. So we need a more powerful GDT driver. For this we don't have to change much of the circuit, we just have to add a little bit. At the output of the driver ICs we can simply connect a MOSFET push-pull stage. This consists out of a P-channel and an N-channel MOSFET. In our case we use the RIF9530 and the RIF530. Of course we need two push-pull stages because one of the signal has to be inverted. The two push-pull stages need a higher supply voltage of 18 volts, so our power supply got an 18 volt voltage regulator. Otherwise nothing more has changed in the circuit. The way of feedback is the same, but the interrupter is no longer on the board because I will build it externally. The new bridge of the small DRSSTC looks like this. I use 460 and 65. Of course you can also use MOSFETs like RFP460. But with these you better build a SSTC. For a normal SSTC the circuit is also perfect. You can even drive thick bricks with the driver, for example for a big SSTC. One important thing I have to tell you, just because we can add a primary capacitor in the circuit we don't have a real DRSSTC. A real DRSSTC always have primary feedback and oscillate without a secondary coil. This does not work with our circuit because we get the feedback signal from the secondary coil. So guys, that was pure theory today. I hope you like it anyway and you can learn a little bit. I will build the circuit now and hopefully there are such big lightnings in the next video. If you don't want to miss it, like this video, subscribe my channel, support me on Patreon and then we will see us in the next project.